Hey everyone, it's Thursday, the 9th of February, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Right, what have I got for you for today's video? Well, I've got some barricade lamps to show you, which um, arrived last week and I bought them the week before. Oh, and I've got a blue beacon as well. Um, there's a few diecast cars here and a celebrations tub that I got from uh, <coughs> the diecast guy. <clears throat> I do apologise as well because I've still got a cough and I've still got, you know, gunk all in the system. It's still driving me nuts. It's way better than it was though. Um, yeah, anyway. I don't get it. When I'm wearing my high vis coat, Smudge hates it and uh, won't come near me. It's currently laying on the floor, and Smudge is laying in said high-vis coat. But for some reason, see, he doesn't mind it when it's laying there on the floor, on the sofa, it doesn't bother him. But as soon as I put it on, maybe it's the sound he doesn't like, the rustling sound, I don't know. Well, yeah, he's curled up in there, he's comfortable. Right. <clears throat> Also, there's a few things I want to talk about, and you know, I want to mention my other YouTube channels, especially the new one that I started a couple of months ago, <clears throat> um, and the Discord server. I do have one of those as well. I always mention them at the end of the videos, but I might switch that and mention them at the fr a start because I don't think everybody, you know, gets right to the end of the video. <laughs> I don't blame you because I do the same thing when I watch other YouTubers, you know, it's the last couple of minutes I might just flick off. Especially when they get to that bit, you know, where they're rounding up the video. Anyway, <clears throat> let's start with the barricade lamps. So, of course, I went browsing eBay and found these. Uh, the first two I actually bought as a pair from an eBay I've bought lamps from before. What cones from? No, I don't think I bought any traffic cones from. Um, so I got these. <coughs> these are Mark II Tildorn Guardsman lamps. Let's bring those in the view a bit better. There we go. Um, and they are Steady Burn. Now, I have got a Steady Burn in the collection, I believe it's in the outside cupboard, but it's a homemade one. I sort of made it from a lot of broken bits that I had at the time. Um, these two, of course, are factory made Steady Burns. That's the wrong way. I knew I put them that way round for a reason, so there's one. And these are also in lovely condition. In fact, Ooh, he says, bashing it against the chair. Um, there is the odd few mark on them, but I would say this is mostly from storage, you know, like the dirt on the bottom there, just from being sat on a shelf, I would say. There doesn't seem to be any scuffs or anything on this that I would say is from, like, uh, use. Well, I've had very little use. I've got a battery in this one, so I can show you that one as well. I do like these lamps. Um, I think... No. These were the second style of lamp I ever saw when I was a kid. Um, the first one was the Dorman E-Type, the square metal ones. I've got three of them up on that shelf. Um, but yeah, back in the 1990s... Um, there's a company around here called Eastern Electricity. And they basically maintained, you know, the power network in the area. And they used these on the Defiance Barrier System, which seemed to be um, quite a popular system back then. But despite its popularity back in the 90s, I cannot find it these days. Which does tick me off because I do want a few more posts. Because I've got some planks. 
I've got one post. <laughs> I need some bases and more posts. <clears throat> but yeah, so Eastern Electricity used to use those. And I've loved them ever, ever since. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pause for a minute. Hang on. Right, that's better. Just have to blow my nose. <clears throat> I don't think you'd have wanted to uh, see me do that on camera. Right, next up. From a different seller. Um, oh, those first two, the guys always got like lamps and cones and signs and things uh, on eBay. Um, <clears throat> if I remember, I'll put a link in the description to both of these uh, eBayers. But uh, the name of the eBayer I got these from is Paul Barrington 0 that's exactly how it's written. P A U Barrington, then an actual letter O, and then the number zero. <clears throat> but like I said, I've bought a number of lamps from him over the last sort of few years or longer. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, never had any problems. Always arrive in good time, or always as described. So and the other one is more local to me. He um, is called Beast from the East, and uh, he's another one that, uh, I wouldn't say he's always got lamps and signs and things for sale, it's sort of every now and then, but it uh, seems like he's had a bit of a clear out recently because he had several uh, up there, but this was one of them, I missed out on a few. <clears throat> because I didn't have the money at the time when they were up and they sold so the way I see it you win some you lose some but I did get this one and I did get the blue beacon that's on the floor as well which I'll bring up in a minute anyway this is made by Wemus or Vemus as it's German and Vemus Vemus I don't know how you pronounce it um, it is LED it is red and actually a friend of mine over on Facebook's got one of these with red lenses but with a yellow body, not an orange one. So we've got flashing when I turn it on. And if I hit the switch the other side, you can actually switch between flashing or steady burn. Which seems to be quite common in a lot of modern lamps because Nissan do the same thing with their lamps. That's got a few sort of uh, usage marks all over that side at least. Not so much this side, but I'm wondering if that bracket on the back has got something to do with it. It's sort of provided a bit of protection for the body. Because there's really not that many marks on that side, but this side is um, quite scuffed up. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. <clears throat> Which doesn't bother me. I actually quite like lamps. I've got a few uh, war, war wounds like that. I'll just put those up here for a minute. <clears throat> right. He also had this for sale, which he edited to look black because of eBay's rules. They don't like you selling these. <coughs> a nice blue beacon. Made by Heller, so this is German as well. It's a permanent mount. Um, although the box says 24 volt and amber, it doesn't look amber to me. And according to the sticker, it's 12 volt. <laughs> I don't think that's the correct box for it, but hey ho. So the lens is actually really easy to get on and off on this. You literally just have a little tab down there. I've seen other beacons do it the same way as well. You just pull that down with your thumb and twist. Now this has one major difference um, to all my other rotating beacons that I've got in the bedroom. All my other ones, the light bulb is mounted here in the base and stands upright and then the reflector goes around the light bulb. If you look at this one, it's actually mounted in the back of the reflector. See? See? I quite like that design actually. And to be honest, I think that's more effective. That's just my opinion. I just feel it's a bit more effective that way. 
Not that it really matters these days, you know, when everyone's using LEDs and whatnot. There we go. And it looks like um, Beast from the East, possibly. I'm not sure if it was him or someone else, but I've just put a little bit of uh, appliance flex on here just so it can be tested. And it does work, it actually works quite nicely. <clears throat> But I'll show that running in another video because I haven't got the power supply set up. I might get a few more down while I'm at it. Right. Yeah, so those are the lights, or the latest lights I've got for the collection. Um, die cast. <laughs> that don't belong in here, actually. So, I've got these from my uh, die cast guy. But uh, there's not really that much interesting in here. I've got a nice little old Matchbox Beetle. I've got this in the bronze colour, but not this cream. It is actually what I would describe as a cream colour. Because the more I look at it, the more I actually think of a pot of cream. <laughs> so, yeah, that's definitely, in my opinion, a cream colour. Um, got a red Corgi Mini. Now, I've got the green version of this. I believe they did one with a big Fina logo on the roof as well. Fina? Is it Fina or Fina? I know it's spelled F-I-N-A, but I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, here's an old double-decker bus that I don't have. It's super fast. Matchbox super fast. You can tell from those wheels. Um, but one of the main reasons I bought these is because I just wanted these. The Mark II Escort RS 2000s. That one's in way better condition though. And possibly in better condition than the one I've got in my cases. In one of my cases in the bedroom. I can't remember which one. That one, I'm not sure what I could do with that one. There's got a bit of a break in the base though. Do a custom paint job with it because it is quite rough. Don't know. Power sell it on. I know for a fact, even in that rough condition, it would sell. <laughs> um, <clears throat> apparently, that would be worth putting on eBay alone, according to the chap I got them from. He doesn't do eBay himself, otherwise he would have probably done it himself. But he doesn't do any online banking or anything like that. But yeah, apparently, um, he looked at one of these on eBay and it sold for about £10 in pretty much the same condition. I've not looked. You know, I can do a bit of searching on eBay at some point and confirm that or disprove that, one or the other. This is the only major wreck we've got in here. Nice little doing buggy. I like the swirly wheels on that. I wouldn't mind doing a restoration on this, actually, at some point. Oh, was a couple of flowers in here. Got some huskies, a couple of huskies in here. Ford Thunderbird, it is unfortunately missing its windshield, but still a nice looking mower. I quite like it. Got some Hot Wheels Fantasy in the bottom here. We've got a little tank thing missing its tracks. I don't think I've got this one. I've got a few of the Matchbox military vehicles. I don't think I've got that one. I've got them lined up on a shelf in the bedroom, so I'll have to double check that. Another Astra GTE with the STP livery on it. Again, I could probably sell that one on because I've got a few of these, or maybe I'll do a custom paint job with them. Because these STP ones seem to be um, quite a common version of it. The question is, what colour could I paint them? paint them to go with the blue interior, unless I uh, paint the interior as well actually. Yeah, I think that's the only interesting one in there. <laughs> I've got another one of these uh, Mustangs. That one might end up in the scrap box actually, it's a bit rough and it's got a busted rear window. And as always, the engine is missing. I think I've only got like two out of a half a dozen of these. Um, and they're not all pink, there is a couple in like an orangey colour as well. 
Like, I've had the Wildcat Mustang, I can't remember now without looking at them. But yeah, I have got a couple with the engine, but most of them I've got are missing the engine. I mean, you could do like a custom build with it, you could just fill that in. Sand it off, paint it all up in a custom colour. You've got the big chunky sort of drag wheels at the back, so you could do a custom drag with it. <coughs> anyway. So here's a Hot Wheels, I think it's a, and it's got Chevrolet or something written on the bottom of it. So I don't know if it's like a Chevy concept car or something. Hang on, let me just Dublay check. No, nope. the fact that it's called a Chevroleta, a Chevroletta, would say it is actually a fancy car, you know, using the, a modified version of the Chevy name. I actually quite like that one, so I'll probably keep it. It's got red lines in the wheels as well. I don't know if that means it is actually a red line. That one I'll probably sell. It's just a Ford Sierra. I've got a few of these now. The, uh, what is it? Home Fire logo on it. I don't know if they still be. What if they still exist? Home Fire. Yeah. It's a Sierra, that'll be an easy one to shift on. Right. Next. A bit of a selfless promotion, I think. Because um, uh, I have got two other YouTube channels which I barely speak of on here. Although, I do link to them in every video description. Every time I upload a video, I put the links in the description. Um, one of them is the Bricknut 30, which is the channel I use for my Lego. Which I haven't been uploading a lot to lately because I haven't really done anything to upload to that channel. Or bought any sets or anything that I would feel would be worth doing a video on. Um, I mean, I was doing videos like at least once a week when I had my Lego City here because I always had content. But pretty much when the LEGO City went, I lost my content, so... Yeah, it's sort of been very few and far between, unfortunately, on that channel. But I want to bring life back into that channel. Um, and the other one I started most recently, which is the gaming channel, English Gamer 38 um, Which I've got a video for up here, which I'm going to edit up before I go to bed and upload it. I'm actually running late with that one. Um, and at the moment I upload three days a week to that channel a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday you know today's now Thursday so I am running a couple of hours late with it but never mind better late than never well in fact in some parts of the world it's still Wednesday so yeah um, various games but for me, I am quite a simulator player. I do like my simulation games. And I do like horror games. And usually on a Friday, I opt for like a random horror game that I found on Itch.io or something like that. Which, for some reason, don't do as well as the simulator games that I play. Because I like playing My Garage, which is what this one is. Um, and I do enjoy House Flipper as well. I might do a video on for next Monday. Um, <coughs> go away, cough. <coughs> Been nearly two weeks, I'm getting bored of it now. Uh, yeah, I think it, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I started the channel a couple of months ago. It's sort of been well, I didn't expect anything else really, it's just been a slow build up with subscribers. Last I looked I had 37 on that channel. I don't know if that's good for a couple of months old channel or what it is, maybe I could do more. Um, to try and get the channel known. I mean, when I'm watching other gamers 
I do leave comments under that channel name, so I do switch over to that account and leave the comments. You know, I guess as a way to promote the channel, you know, make the well at least make the channel known and make myself known. <clears throat> but that is literally all I've done. I've not posted links anywhere other than between the channels because on each channel in the description I put links to my other channels. So, and I also link to the Discord server. Now I don't have a Discord server for each channel. It's just the one general purpose Discord server with uh, channels on it for each subject really. So there's a channel for the Lego. Um, and there's general discussion, discussion channels and whatnot. So yeah, feel free to check them out if you'd like to. If you don't use Discord as a messaging service, it is a good service. I've used it for quite a few years now. Um, and I liked it so much so that I actually ditched Skype altogether because that used to be my main service, especially after Yahoo went bye-bye and MSN or Windows Live, whatever it was at the time, went bye-bye. Well, they actually bought Skype, didn't they? So that's why they got rid of that. <coughs> Um, yeah, and Discord is so much better, especially for video calls, you know. Skype is so unstable and unpredictable when you're trying to voice call or video call other people, especially if you have multiple people in the chats. Discord, stable as anything. And I'm frequently seeing on at least one of the Discord servers, I'm on, up to sort of ten people having a voice chat in one of the voice chat channels on a server I'm on. Um, and I've joined in as well sometimes and no one seems to drop out and everything seems to be quite stable so. And you can get it for the mobile phone. There is a mobile phone version of it. I haven't got it installed on mine yet. <coughs> so yeah, even if you're a phone user I'm on there all the time. It's probably going to be easier to get me on there than somewhere like Facebook. Which is actually, that reminds me, should I make a Facebook page for my YouTube channels? Would that be something worth doing? If anything, is just an extra bit of social media. I've got Instagram as well, but I don't really post to it. I don't really go on Instagram. Same with TikTok. <laughs> I just watch the videos. I don't make TikToks. Um, should I try doing some YouTube Shorts or Facebook Reels? Something like that. Would that be something um, worth doing? Maybe with Smudge involved. I think with Facebook Reels you get 60 seconds. I don't know if that's the same with uh, YouTube Shorts. <clears throat> anyway, <coughs> moving on. Been 25 minutes already. Right. Um, what else was it? Oh, yes. So. My stepdad has been really busy over at Mum's because he decided to completely, basically refurbish the whole bathroom. Um, I mean, when they moved in, the toilet and sink was crap and broken, so he changed them um, for a toilet and sink they'd had down here, which he intended to put in the bathroom when they lived just down the road here, um, but never got to that. But he put those in and they just turned out to be crap. Um, so, a few weeks ago he actually went out and bought just a basic cheap toilet and sink. <coughs> you know, just a basic white one, nothing special. Um, and fitted those and he then decided he was going to retile the bathroom. Now, 
And their bathroom is what we call a wet room over here. And it's just basically they take out the bath and or shower or whatever, put in I think it's outro flooring, anti-slip flooring, you get a lot of it in hospitals and whatnot. Um, and then it goes up the wall so many inches like that. And it's sealed all the way around the top and where the joints are in the corners. Right. <coughs> and where the shower is, they put a drain directly in the floor. Um, and that is designed for like the elderly and those with mobility issues and whatnot. So it's easier for them because they have a couple of handles fitted on the wall as well. Um, but my stepdad decided to buy a shower tray, which is literally, it's only about that thick. It's got to be one of the thinnest shower trays I've ever seen. Um, so I helped him fit that over the weekend. Uh, the drain had to be slightly moved over to match that of the shower tray. The existing drain in the floor, I mean. Um... And he's tiling the whole bathroom. I mean, just the area where the shower was originally was the only part that was tiled. So it was literally like half the bathroom was tiles and the other half was painted walls. But to be honest, the surface on the other walls is shit. <laughs> it really is. There's cracks that have been badly filled in and all sorts. It looks dreadful, even with a fresh coat of paint on it. Which they did, you know, not long after they moved in, they put a nice coat of paint on it. And that still looked crap. So he's just decided to tile the whole bathroom. Apparently he's run out of tiles now. <laughs> I need at least one more box. Um, so he's done that and of course to make life easy he's had to take the toilet out again and the sink out again. <coughs> but I don't think he's siliconed around the sink probably for that reason because he knew he had to take it out again. Um, yeah, apparently the tiling is nearly done, he just needs that one extra box now. Um, he's tiling the floor as well, so the outro is going to come up and he's going to put... I don't know if he's done the floor already, but the floor is going to be um, tiled. Um, and of course the last thing will be the lighting. Now he's already bought the lights to go up. Because at the moment they've got one of them bloody old double D fluorescent tube fittings, you know, enclosed fittings. I actually had one in my bathroom. I don't like those. <laughs> um, which is why I actually took mine down and put an LED one up. Which is actually one I got from Lidl's. So it's a Levano Lux, which we'll come back to in a bit. Anywho, he's bought a couple of, um, you know, the recessed LED downlighters. Um, so I've got to fit those, which in, th in theory it should be relatively easy. You, know, you cut your holes in your ceiling. I don't think we've got a circular car that's big enough for those. Um, so we might actually have to do it the old-fashioned way. With a little plasterboard saw, which I have got. Um, you know, take the old light fitting down, obviously, and then use the feed to that light fitting. In theory, all I'd have to do is connect it to one light and then jump across from that light to the next one. <laughs> in theory, it should be that easy, but uh, I have learned in my 39 years on this planet that uh, easy jobs very often turn out not to be that easy. <laughs> so I never assume it's going to be an easy job. I always assume it's not going to be easy. Um, now I actually quite like that sort of lighting, you know, the down lighters, recessed ones, always have. And it seems to be quite a big fashion at the moment. I mean, I've been in a lot of um, places lately, new homes, people that have just, you know, finished, well, they've completely refurbishing their homes and whatnot. And they have these recessed down lights in every room. I don't like them that much, personally. I mean, it's their house. If that's what if that's what they like, great, you know. I'm not dissing it, but for me, I wouldn't want them in every room. I would have them 
and I would actually have them in here. If I had access to the attic, I would have fitted them here. But I don't have access to the attic space. Um, but I would have put a couple in the bathroom. I'd have probably put them in the kitchen, maybe. And some in the hallway. Because I think they look nice in the hallway. Especially if you've got a house, you know, where you've got a long hallway. <coughs> I do like them in those sort of rooms but when it comes to bedrooms even living rooms like this don't like them personally I'd rather have like a hanging light fixture or something anyway while we're on the subject of lighting I've changed it to above my desk as you can see I've got these um, under cabinet LED fixtures from Lidl's. So these are Lovano Lux as well. Um, I don't know how good they are because I haven't been using them for long. I've only been using them a few days. But in my experience with Lovano Lux uh, lighting products and their light bulbs, because I've still got four in the light fitting up there which I've been using for the past at least four years, probably getting close to five years actually. I've had those up there. I can't believe LED bulbs have been around that long already. Time flies. I swear, the older you get, the faster time flies. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, LED lighting from Lovano Lux and Lidl's. In my experience, it's been pretty good. In fact, you know, I've got those. I've got those. I think I've got some Lovano ones in the light fitting over there. Um, the bathroom light is actually a Lovano Lux, as I mentioned. I think I've got a few other LED bulbs dotted about that are Lovano Lux. Maybe the one in the hallway light, I can't remember if that's a Lovano or a Status. But yeah, it's all been pretty good. You know, these ones are still working. I'm pretty certain, though, these ones in the lounge light have dimmed out a little bit. They've gotten a little bit dimmer over time. But they're still working fine. They're still going strong. Um, I think the ones in the bedroom light are actually um, status, I can't remember. Anywho, the reason I changed the lights up here is because this one, I'm not going to say it's faulty, well I'll say it's intermittent, it's got an intermittent fault. It'll work and it could work for hours without a problem. And I've actually found it seems to have the problem when it's first turned on, when it's cold. And once it's warmed up a bit, it seems to work fine. But it's got a flicker, this end. I think it's an LED that flickers. Um, which is causing whatever row of LEDs it's on to flicker slightly as well. But like I said, it's quite intermittent. and seems to do it mostly when you first turn it on. Now the bummer with this is, this has only been in storage for a couple of years or so, three years, because I bought this one along with the one that I've got on the end of my bed, on the headboard end, which works absolutely fine and always has done. I don't know why I bought two at the time, but I did buy two at the time. Yeah, so that one, this one's just sat in storage for a few years. I've only had it up there for a couple of months when it started doing the flickery thing, so... Maybe storage caused it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I can actually get into the LED strip itself because these end caps come off. Then you got screws there. That's why I actually took the defuser. It's meant to be a big defuser over this. But I took it off. Expecting to find, uh, you know, just a plain strip of LEDs in here, not in a tube. But to be honest, I actually quite like it with the diffuser off. <laughs> quite like it as it is. Will you get on there? Thank you. <coughs> what do I do with them? I just realised there is meant to be screws in here to hold that on. But I can't remember what I've done with them. 
or what I've done with the diffuser actually. But yeah, I have all of the Vano Lux lighting because I've bought flashlights as well. It's all been good. I can't complain. Apart from that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually quite like the Vino Lux's style of lighting and whatnot. In fact, I've just remembered I've got an LED floodlight over at Mum's. It's been over there for about a year, bought it about a year ago to put up at Mum's and I still haven't put it up. <laughs> might see if I can fit that um, sorry about that outside the front door to replace the crappy old light that's up there at the minute because it really isn't the best of lights up there I'll just let the weather warm up. I mean, there's what? There really isn't that much long left of uh, these short nights now, is there? Another month? Two months? I mean, the nights are pulling out now. It's nice to see some daylight at five o'clock in the even, um, afternoons now. Uh. Oh, I've set up a teeny tiny little um, double O layout. Let me show you that. I've got to move you first. If we put you there, fold the screen in so I can see what I'm doing when I turn the camera. Yeah. <coughs> oh, for Pete's sake. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I repurposed this board. It did have um, Lego base plates glued to it. Well, actually, they weren't Lego. They were an off-brand, but still. Um, yeah, I just repurposed it. It does work. But that locomotive that's currently sitting on the track on that uh, left corner, <laughs> the front wheels, they keep derailing, so it keeps getting stuck. Usually on this corner as well, so I don't know if there's a problem there or if it's just the locomotive is a pain in the backside. I might try Bobo, that sort of light bluey green diesel that's sitting in the middle there. <clears throat> um, see if that'll go around any better. <coughs> but uh, the problem is. This is one thing I don't like about this three rail stuff. When the wheels derail like that, there is a risk, and it does happen nearly every time, that the wheels short between the middle rail and the outer rail. But it seems like Hornby had thought of that because that controller's got a trip out thing on it. So it's got like um, some sort of overload protection on it which is good but I didn't expect for something quite that old I didn't think they had s stuff like that back then but obviously they, they did I've actually got an old triangle controller that does exactly the same thing when it gets overloaded it trips out <clears throat> I've got that feeling in the back of my throat where it needs to be cleared and it just won't clear Got it that time. I'm glad when this cough has gone. Right. <coughs> uh. <clears throat> oh yeah, that actually reminds me. Technically, yesterday now, <laughs> I actually had a visit from Cat. Because um, I'd sorted her out a bunch of... Uh, double O gauge railway stuff as she wants to get one started herself um, and she had her friend with her, Vic who came up and had a look at my model railway the number of 
people that come into this flat, you know, and they see all this Lego, all the cars and all the barricade lamps and whatnot, the look on their faces and their reaction is just brilliant. That's one of the reasons I actually love having all this display is, is just the reaction I get from people when they come in. <clears throat> um, I think that alone is... Well, I was going to say it's worth it, but I think it's, you know, it's a nice feeling. Because I have to say myself, sometimes I'll just sit in this chair and I'll just admire it myself. Because, you know, I've got all that vintage Lego all on that side, apart from a couple of uh, modern sets on the top shelf there. And actually, that whole top shelf is modern set, so I stand corrected there. Um... <clears throat> All the various different die-cast models I've got and all sorts of shapes and sizes and scales and whatnot. And then I've got my Five Nights at Freddy's plushies up there. Oh, and Vulpix, one of my favourite Pokemon. And I think on the top shelf, yep, I've got a Funko Pop Vulpix up there that I found at a car boot. Yeah, I've got the Five Nights at Freddy's plushies there. One of these days, I'll see if I can get a Freddy Fazbear and whatnot as well and complete the set. <coughs> Pardon me. Actually, speaking of barricade lamps again, I want to change these ones on the shelf. Time to have a change around, I think. Might actually change some of the ones that are hanging up in the hallway still. <clears throat> so it's been the same for like um, two plus years actually, it's been the same. Oh yeah, I did forget to mention as well, these lights up here, they switch individually. And at the moment, I've only got them uh, on a plug. I haven't wired them into the switch on the wall there, not yet. So, uh, I must not turn that middle switch on, because the wire is still hanging up there somewhere, so there's bare ends. So if I turn that light switch on... <coughs> I'll have um, a live bare wire. But yeah, until um, I get the cable all sorted out and whatnot and clipped around properly. Um, it's just plugged in for now. Yeah, each light has got its own switch on it. I've only got them both on now because I'm recording. And uh, I want the extra light. But most of the time I actually turn this left one off. Yeah, most of the time I have that one off. <clears throat> nice lights though, I really do like them. And they illuminate, they're 9 watts each by the way. I think. Because uh, I've got a third one here. I can't remember if I've actually... Uh, did I show this earlier or not? I don't think I did, did I? Yeah, I bought three of them. <clears throat> Two for me and one for Mum to go under the shelf above her kitchen sink. Because uh, she was talking to me um, Sunday when I was over there and asked if there was anything I could do to put an extra light under there because uh, she finds it hard to see when she's preparing vegetables at the sink and whatnot. Because the main light is behind her so she shadows it. Um, and it was actually my stepdad that chimed in pretty much instantly <clears throat> and uh, suggested an LED strip or something underneath the shelf. So, hopefully, this is going to work <clears throat> and going to fit. So it's 54.5 centimetres long by 5.3 centimetres wide. 
and the height is 2.7 centimetres. For anyone that was interested. So it's a little over half a metre long. <coughs> it says smart LED light bar, but I don't know what the smart features are. You know, there's no like remote control for it. I've not seen anything where you can like um, Bluetooth your phone to it or anything like that. So, not really sure where the smart part comes in. Oh, 16 energy saving long life LEDs. So that means there must be four LED chips to each individual um, light on there, because there's four circular lights. A neutral white light, yeah, I'd actually agree with that. That is actually quite nice. It's not a warm white, but it's not exactly a cold white either. I actually quite like it. <laughs> I'm usually one for warm white LEDs, but yeah, this neutral one, I could go for neutral. Uh, expandable, includes connecting cable, suitable, suitable for under cabinet and wall mounting, on off toggle switch, with a two meter power, power cable and fixings. Well, there was no cable clips or anything, so I assume it, what it means by fixings are all the screws and whatnot. <clears throat> so, yeah, even reading all that, it doesn't... Still doesn't say what the smart bit is about it. I don't know. So it's a prox 4000 Kelvin, which is 900 lumens, and should, according to this, last 50,000 hours. So in theory, <coughs> I should actually get quite a lot of use out of those. And the best thing is, if they fail, I just find something new and different to put up there. Right. I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about. I think that was it. Well, I usually like to go for an hour with my video, so I've got, about, I've got just over 10 minutes left. Can I think of anything? <laughs> I bet I will as soon as I turn the camera off. I guarantee I will. Um. <coughs> no, all right then. I'm going to shut the video down, get a, sna a snack, and at least have a snake. <laughs> I don't know why I was going to say a snake. Get a bit of a midnight snack. So I'll take my last lot of meds, diabetic meds, and go to bed I think. So thanks a lot for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!